Fresquez and welcome to Long Beach, where the second largest port in the United States is located. It might not seem like a big deal if you don't live nearby, but the fact is almost half the items we buy here in Southern California and throughout the United States are first imported through this key gateway. So if the goods stop coming, we can't get our stuff. And if the price of moving these goods goes up or down, it directly affects what we pay at the store. And then there's jobs. Right now, this port alone generates about 1.5 million jobs in the United States. So if this place grows, there's more jobs. Always a good thing. Peeking into this giant operation and getting a sense of what happens here and how it affects you and me is what this show is all about. So join me today as I share with you some of the behind the scenes stuff that you might not know. Like, what's a reefer lead man do? Hi, I'm Dave Greer, the reefer lead man with Long Beach Container Terminal. I maintain the refrigeration equipment that goes worldwide, delivers produce, frozen meats, ice cream, whatever they want at special commodities. These reefer containers are ocean line containers. They go on the vessel to the ports they are designated to. Uh, they maintain the temperature of the commodity that goes anywhere in the world. To load these vessel, these containers to the vessel, we had to make sure that temperature and vents are set correctly. We had to make sure all the AC power circuitries are working okay and that uh, they will work and last for 30 days at the most across the Pacific. At this present time, it's a growing industry. The mechanics down here in the harbor are number one, and you would enjoy it and make a decent living for your family. different jobs here at the port that work with and support port operations. One place that has a lot of activity right now is the construction site of the replacement bridge for the Gerald Desmond Bridge. Recently there was a press conference where a progress report was released. Check it out. The building of the second tallest cable stay bridge in the United States with two towers that will reach 515 feet into the sky, the new Gerald Desmond Bridge replacement project has reached a key construction milestone. To celebrate and mark this critical foundation phase, officials gathered at the site of the $1.3 billion project in Long Beach, California. Well, this bridge is really the bridge uh, of our future for the city of Long Beach. It's gonna allow the port to really grow, to grow the economy, to grow the national economy, uh, but also ensure that the jobs in Long Beach stay here, uh, that they grow, that the port continues to really support the entire community. We had to plan for the future. And so this bridge is tall enough where the tallest conceivable ships being planned or even being thought about will be able to pass under that bridge. This is really going to drive productivity and efficiency and throughput. So it's wide, it's tall, it's iconic, it's amazing. During the event, a video showed how the new bridge will be supported by about 350 foundation piles that will be constructed in the ground at depths of down to 175 feet below the surface. These are uh, cast and drilled hold piles and they're, they're deep shafts, they're six, eight foot diameter shafts. These piles, we use a casing, we have an oscillator that twists the casing down into the ground and as that goes down into the ground, a clam shell then will come and dig the dirt out. Then we lower the rebar cage into the excavated casing, and then we slowly oscillate or twist that casing out of the ground as we fill up the pile with concrete. And having that casing in the ground and pulling up with the concrete, it ensures a quality pile. Once the piles are completed and capped, they will support the approximately 70 columns that will support the bridge. It will create a new iconic structure for the city, like the Queen Mary. This bridge will be forever be linked to the city of Long Beach. The fact of the matter is this is part of an overall capital project that allows us to be the most efficient port, uh, not just in the United States, but we're gunning for the world. To follow the Gerald Desmond Bridge replacement project, visit newgdbridge.com. One of the things that amazed me about that video was the time-lapse photo sequence that compressed a week's worth of construction time into just a few seconds. Big machines and hard-to-find locations are a big draw for photographers. Knowing this, the port started a fun program two years ago. This photo workshop and tour invites amateur and professional photographers to capture the beauty and majesty of the port. Here's a look at just some of the results of this year's annual photo exhibit. 
It's a picture of success. The second annual Port of Long Beach Photo Gallery packed the downtown Liberty Gallery, showing off the work of 76 local photographers that took part in a photo workshop and tour, where they learned all about the port while capturing its beauty. The port tries to reach out to the community. In this case, it, it, there's a multiplier. It's just unbelievable. They get excited about their camera work. They produce wonderful photographs. It's where we join hands with another part of the community. I'm really glad to see folks out here. I hope it triples, quadruples next year. Um, this is a, a program that really is taking off and people love. Part of Arts Month in Long Beach, the Port partnered with the Arts Council and Cal State Long Beach for this event and contest, and demand was high. All the available spots on the Harbor Tour booked up in just four minutes. And the results are stunning. Dave Freeman nabbed third place with real life watercolors and second place winner Joan Day captured this one called Jewels of the Night. The port was beautiful. I can't even tell you how many of my pictures I didn't choose. When it came up and all the lights were on it, you couldn't not take a picture of it. We are delighted to be collaborating with the Port of Long Beach. It's a fabulous partnership for us and really appreciate the support and the value that they obviously see in the arts, what it does for our city. Top honors and a $250 prize went to amateur Shireen Burkholz, who snapped Oriental Queen, showing off the variety of depths, colors, and angles the port has to offer these artists. I was so excited, I couldn't believe it. It made me feel really good because, you know, I was competing against professional photographers, and so I really appreciated the, the, the port giving me that kind of opportunity. If you'd like to see the results of this year's exhibit, visit polb.com slash photo tour. This program is one of the many outreach and educational programs that the port offers year round to people and students of all ages. Here on their website, you can get all the info. And if you see something that interests you, you just sign up or give them a call. Now don't go away because after the break, we'll talk about something that we all care about, security.